as we step this morning into that portion of our service where we get to actually hear a word from God, I want to reflect on where we've been just briefly. The first 11 chapters of the book of Genesis is what we've been hearing about for the last few weeks. Those chapters are really God's knowledge into prehistoric times. He tells us about the things that we need to know before anybody ever wrote anything down. Today, we're kind of making a shift into a new chapter of God's Word. Because today, God speaks a promise to one person that actually impacts our lives through Jesus. We're going to hear about God calling Abram. This is from Genesis chapters 12 and 13 today. I want you to pay attention. What is God's promise to Abram? And how does he respond in our video for this morning? Abram was a descendant of Noah. He started a journey with his wife, Sarai, his father, Terah, and his nephew, Lot, to the land of Canaan. But on the way there, they decided to settle in the city of Haran instead. God spoke to Abram. He said, go from your land and your family to a place I will show you. I will bless you and make you into a great nation, and the whole world will be blessed through you. Abram went, just as God told him. Sarai and Lot went with him. God led Abram to the land of Canaan. God said, this is the land I will give to your children. So Abram built an altar to the Lord there. A famine came to the land and the people did not have enough food to eat. So Abram, Sarai, and Lot went to Egypt. After some time, they traveled back to Canaan and went to the place where Abram had built the altar between Bethel and Ai. At this time, Abram was very rich. He had many livestock, silver and gold. Lot was also rich with many flocks, herds and tents. Now they had a problem. The land could not support all of their animals and the people with them. The herdsmen taking care of Abram's livestock argued with the herdsmen taking care of Lot's livestock. So Abram and Lot decided to separate. Abram said to Lot, look at this whole land before you. He let Lot choose which land to live in. If you go left, I will go right, said Abram. If you go right, I will go left. Lot looked out and saw that the entire plain of the Jordan was well watered like a beautiful garden. So he chose to live there. Lot journeyed to the east and lived in the cities of the plain near Sodom. And Abram lived in the land of Canaan. After Lot left Abram, God again spoke to Abram. God said, look north, south, east, and west. I will give all that you see to your children forever. I will give you more descendants than you can count. Get up and walk through the land I have given you. So Abram moved his tent to a place called Hebron, and he again built an altar to the Lord. Abram believed God's words and obeyed God's call to leave his land and his family. God promised to bless Abram and the whole world through one of Abram's descendants. God kept this promise when he sent Jesus, who left heaven and came into the world to rescue sinners. So let me ask this question. How many of you have ever moved before? Raise your hand if you've ever moved before. Okay. I was kind of counting on multiple people having done that. Now, keep your hand up if moving is like your favorite thing to do. Like, you can't wait to pack your boxes and go live somewhere else. Okay. I see one hand up, and you are built differently, I think. Uh, because most of us don't really enjoy doing that. Most of us, that is one of the most inconvenient things that you could experience in your entire life. But pay attention to what God said to Abram. He said, look, what you're going to do is leave everything that you know behind, pack up your stuff, and go to a place that I'm going to show you. Right? You're going to move. And this is... One of the things that puts our anxiety down about moving is usually we get to see the place. At least every time I've moved, at least I've seen pictures of the place I'm going. At least I know the address to the place I'm going. But this is like, this is like if your parents were to wake you up in the middle of the night and say, all right, pack your things, we're leaving. Well, where are we going? Are we going somewhere close? Nope, 
different country. Well, what country? I'll tell you when we get there, right? You know nothing, and still Abram goes. This is an amazing, amazing faith that this man has. But it doesn't make him perfect, right? And we'll see that through the story of Abram. Uh, but what I want to focus on is I want to focus on how God makes promises to Abram in the middle of this moving. And I want to reflect on what the experience of our moving is like, because I think what our experience of moving does is it shows us some of the things we long for, and what God's Word tells us today is that He is the one, through Jesus, who answers our longings. So let's put that first verse up on the screen from Genesis chapter 12. Now the Lord said to Abram, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. The land is a big deal for Abram. And really the land is a big deal for us. This is something we're always concerned about. In the process of a move, we care about the land because what the land really represents is, first of all, when I'm going to this new house, will it be enough for me? Will it be enough for my family? If my family is expanding, will it be able to expand in this new house? If it's already been expanded, will we all be able to fit here? That matters a lot. Will it be enough? And then there's another thing about home that also matters. Will it be enough for us and will we belong here? Right. That's what the promise of land really was to Abram. He got up and left where he was, where he did belong, where he had enough, and he trusted that in the land God will show him. God will give him a place to belong and God will give him enough. And later in this same chapter, there's where we hear the promise in this chapter and in the next chapter again where God says, look at this land. This is the land I will give you. And, and as he looks out at that land, he sees that as, as great as his descendants will be, that land will be more than enough for him. And that land will be a place for him to belong. That's the first piece is, will I belong and will I have enough? And God's promise of the land to Abraham says, you will. The second piece of this promise is from this verse that's on the screen right now, I will make you a great nation. I think the other thing that I have noticed when I move is since I've been married, I've moved seven times in the first five years of marriage. And in all of those times of moving, every place I lived had a little bit of a different culture. I remember we were in, in Michigan in an apartment and you didn't speak to, make eye contact to, with, or know the names of any of the people you were living in that apartment complex with. We moved to St. Louis and that's about as much as you did. You spoke to, you knew their name, and you made eye contact with them. Uh, but you didn't really get involved in their lives. Buying a house is a little bit different. You want to know what the neighbors are doing because you want to know how they're mowing their lawns. Right? You have different levels of involvement, different cultures in every place that you live. And as Abram was going to this land of Canaan, he had no idea what the culture was going to be. He had no idea how that culture might influence his family. But he had this promise that he was going to be a great nation. And you see, a nation has a culture. And what, what Abram was doing with this promise is God was showing him that even though he was going to be different than the culture of everybody around him, his culture in that place would be unique, but it would be his. And when I say his, I mean it would be God's culture in Abram's family. You see, the things that we hope for, the things that we long for of a culture that supports us, of a place to belong and a place that's enough, those are the things that we also long for every time that we move, every time we go to somewhere new. Those are the things that Abram longed for too. And those are really the things that God gives through Jesus. You see, in this story, what we see is Abram actually makes it to the land. 
But not long after he makes it to the land, he starts to kind of have a little bit of doubts of God's promise because the famine hits and he starts to wonder, is this land really going to be enough? And he flees to Egypt. And by God's grace, Abram does some things that aren't great and God graciously kicks him out of Egypt and he goes back to the land. We heard in the video today, he offers the promised land to his nephew Lot and by God's grace, Lot chooses the other land so that God delivers this land to Abram. But the amazing ways that God keeps his promises, he keeps it throughout the Old Testament in little ways, but 42 generations later, Jesus would come. Abram's great, 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 42 times great-grandson would arrive on the scene and what Jesus would do is he would promise to give us a place to belong that is enough. He would promise to give us a new culture and make us a part of this great nation that God promised to Abram. Because when Jesus comes to earth, he says, I am going to my father's house and in my father's house there are many rooms and I am going there to prepare a place for you. Because in the house of God, just by believing in Jesus and who he is, you have a place to belong. And that place is certainly enough. In, in the house of God, we have a new king who is different from the nations around us. We have King Jesus who is reigning in our lives. And we are a part of the greatest nation this world has ever known and ever will know because we are under King Jesus. We are a part of the nation of Christ. And here gathered in this place as we worship him, we're reminded that we have the greatest king this world could ever know. Even if my culture, even if the nation that I'm technically holding citizenship in falls apart, I have citizenship in the nation of Christ. And this last verse, I think, is the one that really drives the point home. God says to Abram, I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and him who dishonors you I will curse and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. See, Jesus came to earth as the greatest blessing this world's ever known. When you think about the blessing, don't just think about the livestock. Don't think about the silver. Don't think about the gold. When you think about the blessing, think of what is more precious than all of that. And that's the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is the price that God thought you were worth. Jesus came to earth, lived an innocent life, the very Son of God, the second person of the Trinity, who is himself God, dies for you so that you could live with God forever. That is a blessing beyond any blessing. And by faith in him, we have that blessing. Just like Abram did. We're received into that blessing, but we're not just blessed for our own sake. We're blessed to be a blessing, so that the whole earth should be blessed through us. Just last week, that. Hurricane Helene went through and it did a lot of damage. And it went up to North Carolina and did a lot of damage there. And I was talking to somebody just the other day who had family in North Carolina and they were explaining all of the aftermath of that hurricane and how, how you really, in a lot of ways, saw the worst in people. She was sharing about how they also, in their own homes, didn't have clean water to drink or even to take a shower in. But then she shared what the church was doing how the church had opened its doors, how the church had let people take showers and clean themselves, how they had let people take as much water as they needed and, and take that home so that they would be provided for. In that place, the church was so blessed by the blood of Jesus. They were so blessed by the life that God had given them for eternity that they wanted nothing more than to share the blessing. And so my question and challenge for you today is how will you share the blessing because you are worth the precious blood of Jesus to God because you are blessed to have a place to belong and a place that is enough you are blessed to have a different kind of culture that won't break down you are blessed to be loved by the almighty God and so let's share that blessing <laughs>